Yeah. I will take uh, a motion from my right hon. Friend for the Forest of Dean and then my I am grateful. I am grateful to the Minister. Can, can I just say to the Minister, coming back to this point about the impact assessment, in the document prepared for the House, it says a full impact assessment has been prepared. Now, Ministers need to give accurate information to the House. If that is not correct, and it's misleading, it should be corrected immediately. And it's not good enough to say something's going to be coming along afterwards. We're going to be asked to vote on this today. There is no urgency here. These regulations do not come into force for 16 weeks until November. So it is perfectly reasonable for, the, for them to be taken away for that impact assessment which has been prepared to be published. If there's uncertainty, share the uncertainty with the House. It isn't good enough to expect us to vote on something that is difficult and controversial and complicated and not share the information with the House that the Minister has at her disposal. It is an abuse. Yeah. It's not yeah, yeah. good enough. Well, during the course of this speech, I will share as much information as I can with my right hon. Friend uh, on the rationale uh, behind this. But what I will say to him when, on the point about the timing of it and why he says, well, it could be done later, the problem is that if you do it later, are you then suggesting that care home uh, staff who have not yet been vaccinated, then it's too late? The point is to give care home staff the time between this... Uh, being uh, legislated upon and it becoming implemented in time for the winter when we know that there is this greater risk of the combination of COVID and flu to have the time to get vaccinated knowing for instance that we are generally seeing an eight week period between doses I will take an edge of my right on the phone she will, appreciate, she will appreciate that the provisions before us extend well beyond care home staff but with respect to those staff the 1% that she spoke of in the absence of the impact assessment, if their failure to be vaccinated results in dismissal, who will be responsible for the compensation? Well, my right hand friend asks an important question about the process of how uh, this would work in practice, although I think he's sort of presuming that there is a question of compensation here. So what I'm expecting to see is that Care home managers will be able to, um, care homes will be able to follow a process, and so long as they follow a fair process, there should be no need for uh, compensation, as he suggests. We will set out guidance on this, but the point is that there is a fair process in which, for instance, a care home can discuss uh, vaccination with their, their staff member. They can indeed look to whether there might be an alternative role uh, that that. Um, individual could do if uh, they really don't want to be vaccinated, although I'm realistic that there are not that many roles uh, for um, staff in care homes that don't involve being within the care home. And after that, they must, if there still is, is, a, is a situation uh, where the staff doesn't, member does not wish to be vaccinated, then follow a notice period and make sure they follow a fair process.